two, post four at OP Sunset. Let me give you a little tour real quick. The orders were clear that were handed down. Ground patrol, hostile town. The insurgency's grown because they want us out, so we all seem to agree. We got on the truck, guns loaded up. Scared of the deaths approaching us until my friend said, slow down, wait, hold up, turn left, just trust me. This is what's going to change history. This is going to change the stories that people are going to read. If we keep continuing to go on and not speaking about it, speaking out about our experiences, then no one's going to learn about what actually happens. And until more people start finding out about what happens, this war is going to continue to go on. Hello and thanks for tuning in for another episode of Second Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days. My name is Ava Solberger. We're here at UVM's The Davis Center, where Iraq veterans against the war are here to testify. As part of Winter Soldier, Iraq and Afghanistan, eyewitness accounts of the occupation. This is a precursor to an event that will be happening in Washington, March 13th through 16th, where over 100 vets, as well as Afghani and Iraqi civilians, will be testifying about their experiences. It's about changing history. We talk to the vets about why they need to tell their stories. We all harbor s some story somewhere. A story or insight or testimony or what you did in the war, it'll be this central location. Really, so many of us felt like we were the only ones. We were the only person who had a problem with the war. And I had no idea that a year after I got out of the Marine Corps that I'd be sitting in front of 200 people testifying to the war crimes that I committed. In time we were bored, we would go ahead and either take out cats or we'd try to fire at individuals just to see where we could hit them. If we were to see anything move, then we were to shoot it. That wasn't my kill. Uh, that was my friend Jose's kill. Afterwards, after I killed him, it was, I was congratulated by members of my platoon as well as my chain of command. Um, my company commander, Cap Captain Delgadio, personally congratulated me on my first kill. He, this is the same individual that stated that whoever gets the first kill by stabbing someone to death will get a four-day pass as soon as we get home. It's kicking the doors of houses at 3 in the morning and wake up everyone that was in the houses, gather them around in one room. If for some reason we didn't like the man in the household, we would take him into another room and take care of him however we felt necessary, whether it be choking or slamming his head up against the wall or beating the hell out of him. I have Arabic that says fuck you, phonetically. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's my choking hand, that's why I got it put there. A drop weapon is an AK or something that an Iraqi civilian would have in their household for their own protection. We would carry them in case we messed up and shot the wrong individual. We would drop the weapon and then fire a couple of rounds at a certain area to make it seem like they shot at us and we were shooting back at them. These are drop weapons that were used. Trying to suppress the blue and white minaret named Barimat al Zara. We also destroyed mosques. We never, I never personally went into one, but I did take part in throwing rounds downrange towards them. Another round, Hilo 2. Ooh! Oh! Oh! Oh, yeah! All of the victors still strong. Oh, oh, on ice cream, over. Do it again! Fuck it! Take that Outrage shit down! Give it another shot, over. Take that motherfucker down! Do not think that John's stories are just his own. Every single unit in Iraq has the same exact stories. Every single person that served in Ramadi and Fallujah and Abu Ghraib has kicked in doors and terrorized families at three in the morning because their command said go. The men that I killed, I don't even know their names. I don't think I want to know their names. Drilled into my head was kill, 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 and it's fine. At one point I was a monster and I created a destruction amongst many people. I am sorry for doing so. I will never turn back into the mosque that I once was. We're only four individuals, but start extrapolating that to the 1.2 million individuals that have now cycled through Iraq and Afghanistan. What's going on is just not isolated incidents. The reality of the fact that over a million Iraqis are dead. War puts you in a different state of mind where you get off on destruction and 
every day I was getting off on it. It just felt fucking great. All it is is a click. That's it. My first kill was just... I was shocked at how easy it was. I had butterflies in my stomach because I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect. It was like when I finally pulled the trigger, it's just like, wow, that was it. That was it. It's a fucking click. Life is not a fucking video game. That's where I met Rock Butter and it's going to the war, and it was definitely probably the most life changing event of my life meeting them and experiencing so many people supporting one another. It's almost like being in the military again. They trained us how to do this. Personal courage to do what we know is right. We have to speak for the dead. I'm speaking out about it because these guys can't. This isn't for me. This is for them. I think you're starting to get the picture. Then do something about it. I'd like to thank the vets for their courage and sharing their stories with all of us. We'll get stuck out with you again real soon. This one is uh, five crosses for the five guys in my company that got killed. Um, this is my buddy Rick, <laughs> who was the, in the video destroying the satellite. <laughs> he, he died on May 13th. Um, yeah, Rick James. Right.